are more clearly felt in 10 years time. Just one final question on this. Some, someone um, quoted you as saying that secularism is the safeguard of Islam. How can that be so? What does that mean? I, want, I would like you to imagine a society and in, in that society if you imagine religion as a force which is imposed upon people then in that society it is very difficult for you to have true believers to have sincere believers because if you force any kind of creed any kind of religion upon people then those people would just try very hard to look as you want them to be and that would uh, hinder the sincerity of true believers and they would produce what we call munafiks, which is a very dangerous group of people actually. On the other hand, secularism is a, is a safeguard of sincerity because within a secular system a Christian would come up and say that he or she is a Christian. A Jew would declare his Jewishness in a very open and relaxed manner. A Buddhist would do so and an atheist would do so. So there is no forcing in religion. As you say, Allah himself has said that there is no force in religion and we cannot force anyone to believe in any, any way of uh, religion. So if someone looks at you and uh, just looks at the way you dress or your facial expressions and your outer appearance, he or she would, might think that you are not a Muslim, but then similarly, you might look at someone and deduce that he is not a Muslim, but then he might turn up to be a true believer who prays for five times a day. I sometimes go out and uh, look at the streets and come up with young people who, who wear in a very uh, fashionable manner who might be wearing earrings or what, and they might be uh, young people who pray for five times a day. So uh, there are some very serious polls who tell us that the Turkish population no longer believes in, in the theory of evolution. 90% of the Turkish population believe in creationism. And again, when you look at uh, studies, Turkey turns out to be the country in which many people, uh, the, the great majority of the population, uh, pray and uh, believe in God in a very sincere manner. It's wonderful, brother, that you, you love your country. It's very obvious that you love Turkey. It's very beautiful to hear. And it's good when Muslims can be seen to love their country. You mentioned earlier on, this is the, the next to last question, you mentioned a Turkish and Islamic union. We already have an organization of the Islamic Conference. Do we need yet another organization of Muslims that will just be talk? Well, the government uh, has been taking some very serious steps for the uh, foundation of the Turkish Islamic Union. We have been working uh, in the media, on the internet, and in, in a series of conferences in a very uh, important and keen manner for months on this issue. So, in parallel to this, the Turkish government also works on the issue of the Turkish and Islamic Union. And this union will be formed with the leadership of Turkey and with the support of other Turkic countries. So, th there is a series of conferences being organized. The, the list might be very long to quote here because we have no time. And uh, Georgia, Azerbaijan, Armenia and Israel will be also uh, members of this union. So this union will not only bring together Muslim people, but it will uh, bring together Christians and Jewish uh, people too. So Christian and Jewish states will also be members of this union. So it will be an all-encompassing uh, brotherhood which will bring joy to the world. My final question, because we've been talking for a long time. Very briefly, how do you see the future of Islam and your own future? I can tell you about the future of Islam, but I cannot tell you about the future of my own self because the future of Islam is being explained in the hadiths. On the other hand, my future is not explained in the hadiths. I'm only living my own fate and I have no knowledge about my own future. But as for the future of Islam, I can tell you that in 10 years' time, the Turkish and Islamic Union will be founded, and in 20 years of time, Jesus Christ and 
Mehdid, the Saver, will come to this earth. There will be a great civilization. This union will be a great one. And I am very sure of this uh, because everything which I have said previously became true. And ten years ago, I was talking about a big and global economic crisis, and that became true today. So it, I'm saying now that in 10 years' time, this union will be founded, and in 20 years' time, Jesus Christ will be resurrected. So people will be very shocked at these uh, incidents. And after these things will happen, everyone will be a true believer because these things are Allah's promises. And Allah wanted uh, people to be non-believers in the 19th century, for example, and now he wants people to be true believers. So in the 19th century, it was the fate of Darwin, Marx, Lenin, and Stalin uh, to be producing their own ideologies. And now a new fate is being written for our human beings, and that fate uh, channels us into being true believers. Mr. Adnan Oktar, my brother in Islam, Harun Yahya, thank you for sharing your time and sharing your thoughts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Um, I, I'm very uh, joyful of your presence here too, and you are most welcome. You are my brother, and I really hope that we will be seeing each other again in heaven. And in heaven, I hope that we will be able to sit uh, in front of one another in, in chairs in the heaven, and we will be uh, talking about this interview there about the things we did on this earth. And I, I really hope that we will win the grace of Allah uh, in heaven. Inshallah. Inshallah. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Shukran. Shukran, brother. Shukran.